Look at that tote board. The giant illuminated board that draws your eyes into it like a moth to the flame. This big glorious monument in the middle of every racetrack that tells you how stupid you are for betting on that six horse because no one else is. But also, it whispers clarity in your ear on how smart you are because the horse you like is the popular choice. This, my friends, is bullshit. Have some confidence in yourself. Screw what that board tells you what with that mentality. This is how you could use that board to your advantage. Today on Handicapping 101, we are presenting to you Tote board watching, a very popular angle in handicapping that has been used since the beginning of time. Okay, maybe not since the beginning of time, but since odds were displayed to people. Now, obviously, it's not about the physical tote board. This is really about watching the odds and how they move on whatever platform you have that you're watching them on and trying to find out where the real money is, aka the smart money is going to and where we start. I guess I need to explain how the odds are made in the first place. Odds are set by a person that the track or tracks deem fit to represent the public and how to bet. Keep this in mind. Now, for a quick yet confusing part of their job, here it is. Most odds makers use a point system to determine that the odds are spread out properly. This basic formula is to take 100 points as a constant and add the WPS, win play show takeout, usually around 18%, and also add one point per horse in the race. Then the odds are converted to make a percentage to make sure the line is balanced. What? That's way too confusing for me. Okay, I'm confused, so are you. It's fine. What do I look like, Jacques Cousteau? In all seriousness, we all get it somewhat. It's some weird algorithm of some sorts, and we just want to bet on some horses. So come on. Let me break this down for you in a clown's kind of way. They take into effect account jockeys, trainers, hot streaks, speed figures, recent workouts, and even post positions. And then they weigh all these factors with the horse's actual ability to come up with reasonable odds for each runner to win. Then, and this is big to keep in mind, this person that's setting the odds isn't listening, isn't listing, I'm sorry, the odds of the horses in their prediction of finish. So, these are not their selections to win the race. They are trying to predict how we the people will bet this race. So let me reiterate. This odds maker attempts to project who the public is going to wager on and will make the favorite, as well as to anticipate all the other horses' odds to win the race. Keep this in mind when you read the tote board. You like the four horse and he's six to one? Who cares? That just means you see it in a different angle than most will. Maybe you're smarter. Who knows? Obviously, if you're still listening, then you are smarter. And that was a shameless ego-driven statement. And I'll stand by it. And that's the morning line segment. And it's important to know just because a horse is two to one morning line doesn't even mean it starts at two to one. Real money wise, the tracks adjust all the odds accordingly to the money and they all start at the same odds in reality. And that's 99 to one. So now let's talk about a few angles that horse racing handicappers use. These AKA tote board watching. So let's go in order. Let's say it's the third race at Santa Anita, 25 minutes to post. The first angle would be the barn money or early money angle. 
So you look up at the board and you see the odds. Why did all this money go on some certain horse right away? There are a few philosophies about this. Number one, the barn workers have bet on this horse early. Whether it be a groom, trainer, exercise riser, rider, I'm sorry, or even a hot walker. These people are all terribly busy during the race. Think of it this way. So you walk out a horse in the sixth race, and you love a horse in the seventh that you have to walk out as well. When do you bet on that horse? Chances are you run up to that window right after the sixth, or you do it even before then, like at the beginning of the races. The barn has no time to sit and wait on odds or handicapping with their friends sitting in the grandstand. They can't do that. Number two, the working public or pro handicappers. A lot of professionals that can't make the track that day will bet ahead of time and bet big before the race goes off. And they tend to do a lot of research, these people that are pros and spending a lot of money, you hope they do. These handicapping professionals are doing the same thing. So because most handy pro handicappers are betting multiple tracks and they're not slighted by the odds, they figure out their bets and they place them before the race. They don't care. And that's our early money slash barn money angle. Now I'm going to call the next move the mid move or the steady move. When you look up at a horse and his odds are going down slowly, then jumping up a little, this pattern repeats over and over again. This may be a sign of, let's say, a slow play. Many people believe that this is a move by somebody who knows something, like the barn money, but has the time to play it and ruin the odds in a sense. For instance, I heard the three horse in the upcoming race is a lock, and he's eight to one. Unfortunately, I'm going to put, ultimately, I'm going to put $100 to win on him, just say. Would I put it on him right away and show my hand to all the people that, you know, if you believe in the first theory, the public always jumps on the better odds. So am I going to put the whole 100 on and make him 4-1 to one right away and then people jump aboard and he stays there or he even drops because people are like, oh, somebody knows something and they're going on that angle. So we, then all of a sudden you change that scenario. If he stays 8-1 to one and the public doesn't see anything, he may increase odds, if anything. So you might get 9-1, to 10-1. to one. So they sprinkle it in with the odds on going timeline-wise. And then maybe they hammer it at the end when they get good odds. Another thing I've heard about before with this guy, let's just say, who even, he throws a monkey wrench into the whole, the fake bet angle. Many tracks will let you cancel a bet. Now think about that. So this guy that wants his odds better throws $100 on another horse and makes the general public think this other horse, so they jump on board of that. So it loses all traction on the horse he's betting. Then he cancels the bet. I realize that's some shady shit, but rumor has it that does happen. So keep an eye out for slow progression downwards. That's our mid move. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about today is, and there's a million more, and that'll be part two of us doing this in this topic. The last flash or late money. This refers to the last money drop, and this is when the odds go off at the race at the time. This is when all the money comes from every venue and every platform jumps right in there. So you sit and wait and see who drops the most on the last drop. So you see what the normal public and the whole country is doing. This is the easiest one to do. Sit back, relax, and it really makes sense. It makes the most sense and it is the most simple if you believe in the public and what the public is doing because you get their true opinion. Most of the time, the public isn't that dumb, honestly. Okay, so... If you see a horse that drops at the last minute from all the people around the world, it probably will run well. You would think everybody can't be wrong, so you go on that theory. And I have said before, and in a perfect world, wouldn't you just wait before you basically showed your hand and dropped $50,000 on the five? 
Yeah, maybe. You can do that earlier. Then he goes off one and nine, and then you have no shot, so you kind of play the odds. So you're gambling throughout waiting on this tote board. There's so many more of these on these timeline tote board watching angles. So now let's talk about these angles. Okay, everybody. So that's tote board watching. I am joined with, as always, the beautiful Sarah Marie and the truck stop burrito, AJ Ryder. And always for my handicapping angles, the guy who's been sitting around for years making angles and, and charts and everything I, I know, you know it. what I've always learned from my dad, I call him dad, you call him Big Gary, Big Gary aboard as well. Welcome guys, and we're going to talk about this. You guys heard all the angles, and I want to go around the horn real quick. We'll start with AJ, and I'll ask everybody the same question. Which angle out of those you believe in the most, which one do you play, and what do you think about those angles? AJ, why don't we start with you? Well, I, I fell asleep about halfway through you saying that. Um, but I think the easiest one is um, is that late money. And I think that's more applicable to most of the people who are playing through, you know. Is that word again? Yeah, you heard it. <laughs> uh, you get it. Um uh, we're playing through like TVG and and Twin Spires and Express Bet and you know what have you. Um, just because you know when you're, you know, a lot of times when you're capping, you're looking for value on on specific courses. And well, shit, I don't. If I like a ten to one shot here, but I'm not 100 percent sold on him. I like him at ten to one, but I don't like him at seven to two. You know, I'm not gonna bet him early in the day and have him go off seven to two. I just feel like that's I, I that's not the the value I'm looking for w when doing a lot of this stuff. Obviously it's a little different like pick threes and pick fives and and all that and all that things. But um no yeah I would think you know I think me and you Randy have talked specifically about how Gulfstream is maybe a little different than a lot of other tracks when it comes to that late money. Um, so that's the thing I, I look for the most because normally I, I don't place my bets super far in advance, like, um, you know, a track worker or any of these, any of these, um, you know, people like that would, um, it is interesting if you do watch the odds and usually it's the easiest in race one, because you see those odds, you, you know, when you're sitting at home in front of your computer, you see those odds change more than you do most you see the you see odds for race two and three change between that 25 minute period between races but you see the odds change the most um for that first race especially at least online um and that's interesting to watch sometimes because you do there there are you know you get a 20 to one shot goes down to five to one and then by post time it's 18 to one so you know somebody plays some big money there early, especially would on that, that horse. You? Would that affect you? If, you if that 20 to one shot is what I'm looking at, maybe, yeah. Okay. I'm a little disappointed, AJ. I figured you were going to be the guy who says they'll sit there and watch the groom while you're at the track and chase him to the window and follow and look mm -hmm. over his shoulder and see what he's doing. I thought you'd be that guy trying to figure out that angle of who knows something that I don't. I figured you'd be that guy. No, I don't know why you think that. Like I'm, 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 I'm a mainly numbers guy. When I see the number on the on the form, that's what um, I'm focusing on. I don't give a shit what the groom was. I mean, the groom to me, the, to me, the groom is biased. So I don't give a shit what he really wants. Um, it's the sharp betters early on that I'm thinking to myself. Well, what do you what think they the do? The groom is the sharpest better of them all. What no, I he, think he's. I think he's the most biased of all. What if he's wearing a tuxedo? <laughs> it's true. Then I, you'd have to bet Always a good angle by Big Gary. Yeah. By the I'm way. Gonna, I'm, we'll then I'm going to wonder what the hell he's doing in tuxedo. Well, no, no. There's an angle to born. this, AJ. There's an angle. That means he's going to get his picture taken in the winner's circle. Yep, so ready. if you see him dressed up, great angle by Big Gary, by the way. We'll just add that as a bonus. <laughs> the best dressed owners and grooms are going to win. They're expecting to win because they're going to get their picture taken. 
So if they didn't comb their hair and they look like shit, their horse is probably not going to win, <laughs> according to Big Gary. Another great angle going, going, coming out from Big Gary there. So keep it. Hey, listen, we all saw the movie Run Like a Girl. We look did. at Stevie. Had we the did. suit on. Yeah. 100 to 1. He had the suit on. They won. He knew he was going to win. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so okay. Um, no, you're right, AJ. I should have thought of that. You are more the numbers guy. I'm more the something that's going on behind the scenes guy. So I'm probably more apt to chase the guy and see what they know that I yeah, don't. Uh, which we've all done. Okay, so we got that. Uh, what about you, Sarah? I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I'm more the, the late late money play here. I kind of just watch the odds throughout the day and I mean, if I like a horse, I like a horse, but if I, if I get stuck on a horse, it doesn't matter to me if I get stuck on that horse and say it's a, you know, a underlay or overlay by the time I'm about that, I'm still going to bet that horse. So you guys are, are, are insistent on that, which I don't know if I truly believe. Um, I know my dad's a big odds guy and he does watch that. I try not to. I try to make the line myself. Honestly, I'm not I'm saying not I'm not saying it's an angle that I, I, I rely the- on, but I am more apt to believe well, not even to believe it. Do you guys um, get worried? But do no. you get worried? No. If you see you like a five to one shot, and then that horse is thirteen to one, does it bother you? Not at all. Well, sometimes it doesn't bother me. Sometimes I, 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 that, that's when I start thinking. Okay, well, what what do they know that I don't? That's what I mean. I think a lot of I, people I get sucked that into that. Yeah. Oh, I get sucked into that sometimes. But Gary, what do you, what do you think about that? I know that bothers you a little bit. Let 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 me. Uh, tell you what I think about early money and everything. Uh, First of all, just take an example like Santa Anita on a weekend. When you look at the odds in the first race, let's say an hour before post time, you see that there's maybe $14,000 in the wind pool. Okay. At five minutes to post, there's now $70,000. Okay. At Zero minutes to post, there is now $210,000. So it went from 14000 an hour before post, five minutes before post, it's 70000 And that 70000 figure goes up to 210000 at post time. So there you see all the shift in the OTB money that's coming in, OK? I think you can have some success if you pay attention to the first odds board, and I believe that barn angle works a lot of times. I've seen at Aqueduct or Belmont or some of these other tracks, when you look at the first odds post and you see a horse that may be 12 to 1 morning line and he's in his first odds are 3 to 1. What I like to do is I look at the wind pool and the place pool just to see if there was an adequate amount of money spent. And there might have been – Eight hundred dollars to win on the horse, and six hundred dollars a place. And the other horses, maybe there's three hundred, the most to win or place or whatever. So that would be indicative of something that the horse is well meant. And I certainly believe there's some barn money involved. And what happens a lot of times by post time, the odds just keep climbing. And when all that OTB money is where it's going to get mostly influenced at the end, when you see that five minutes to post, down to a minute before post, that's when the biggest influence of the odds are going to show. The more money in the pool, okay, it's likely that those are going to be, obviously, the biggest swings in the odds, okay? But up front, you can put $50 on a horse, and you can affect the odds. You put it two minutes left, you're not going to affect it with a $50 bet. That's why I think you made a lot of sense when you said some people are trying to not show their hands and they will periodically go to, go to the window and put 100 to win every five minutes or whatever, rather than show their hands all in one shot. But I really believe the barn gets involved early and that's what could happen. But I've seen with Aqueduct, the horse is well meant. I mean, he goes, he's, he, Big, he drops real early, and by the post time, he's 15 to 1, and he runs a bang up race. And they tip their hand early with him. I, uh, I believe um, that if, if I, I guess I'll ask this question to everybody, and this is the easiest way to go around it. So, looking at that angle, and you're just going off that angle, 
all day, and, and I give everybody um, twenty five thousand dollars to bet on one horse, and it's and it's a decent card. It's not this isn't Fauner Park, so you're gonna like ruin the odds. <laughs> it's, a, it's a decent card. Sorry about Fauner Park. Careful what you say yeah. about Fauner Park. Uh, but so so you're not gonna ruin the odds. So I give everybody whatever it would be twenty five thousand dollars, right? What angle? And I'll ask everybody, what are you gonna do? Which guy are you? Oh, that's easy. I would sprinkle it throughout the day. The day? Well, till the race. I think I'm going to be the douchebag as well that actually puts a little bit of money on another horse and cancels my bet. I'm going to be that guy, and I'm going to lead everybody else astray. They're going to think they're two. I think that one time they wanted to let the the ones who sell tickets at the tracks know that they are not to cancel any bets for that same reason. And I'm sure that some of them still do, but I know even when, uh, for example, the dog track was open in, town, in the town of Plainfield, these cashiers were told, do not, under any circumstances, cancel any bets. Uh, well, because I've of the fact that they've never been that track. big, but I've canceled bets before. No, I'll tell you what. At one time at the dog track, these two guys used to show up there, and it was eight greyhounds in a race. And one guy would hold a briefcase full of money, and the other guy would be the one who gets involved with all the tickets. And they would bet $150,000 to $200,000 on a dog to show. And that's the smart way to do it. You ain't going to play him to win because you can get the same odds, and you'd have to win versus run first, second, or third. So that's the smart way of doing it. And back then, you could pay $0.10 on a dollar. Okay? So if, basically, if you bet $150,000 to show on a dog, all right, make so a you'd, dollar make, you'd make yourself $15,000. Oh, now you'd make $7,500 because you only get paid a nickel on the dollar now, the way they, they adjusted their figures. But that's what they would do. And they would walk out of there with $15,000 profit. And uh, there was two guys. They do it all the time. But what would happen is the one time that I saw the guys come in and they put the, this dog that hit the board 19 straight times. He actually won 19 straight races. He had a little trouble that day, and these guys lost their bet. The three dogs that came in, first, second, and third, they all paid over $300 for a $2 show bet. And that's because the they got to distribute that money amongst the winning show tickets. So, I mean, so that's what today in horse racing terms, that's what they hear when you hear the word bridge jumper. Bridge jumper, yep. That's, um, that's pretty much what that corresponds to. Yeah, well, with bridge jumper is a whole whole different thing, but it, it is interesting. Where but it's still, you, want, you, want, you can watch a tote board and see if there are bridge jumpers. I mean, if you could have one to nine shot in a race, that's something you would want to look at to see if there is a bridge jumper pool. I think it was Arrogate that was at Santa Anita one time and walked out of the gate. Remember that? I think it was Arrogate or what it was around that time. Gunrunner, maybe it might've been Gunrunner. It was like a five horse race and one to nine. And there's so much money in the show pool. It was like a six horse race because I think they can do show then. And everybody put him on the show because it was a gun runner and legitimately, and I might be wrong on the horse, but it was somebody like that. And the horse just walked out of the gate, didn't even run. Walked out of the gate and, and everything showed paid like wow. so if you put two dollars to show on every other horse it was like a six eight dollar bet hmm. you made like a thousand dollars in some cases when you have very short fields and you got this one outstanding favorite like you say maybe one to nine they don't allow show betting for the race yeah you know, that winner place and that's it they'll cancel out the show betting because they're afraid of losing money if the horse shows and they got all that money in the pool, they got to pay five cents on a dollar. So they stand to have a negative pool and therefore they would lose. So a lot of times they'll do that. They'll, they'll run the risk of having them you know, place, but they're not going to run the risk of having them show it be more obvious. And if anybody notices, Gary is actually in a block of ice right now. I was <laughs> saying, did he put a filter on his... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a that cold where you're yeah. at. Yeah, he's in what Superman live? Isn't that like all ice or something? Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, he's in the Fortress of Solitude right now. I believe <laughs> drinking <laughs> drinking moonshine out of a mason jar. Looks like I don't know. Uh, 
All right. Um, so, so I guess, John uh, hasn't visited uh, lately, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, AJ, what would you do with your $25,000? Well, here's what exactly I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play, place my 25 grand on the one horse to win, so that way later I can post it on on social media and be like, "Look, look how good of a capper I am! 25 grand to win on this horse." Bless your heart. Of course you will. But what are you gonna bet it? What are, what are you gonna bet it if you have that? What, you're gonna bet it late. Are you gonna bet it late, like you said? Well, again, I mean, okay. So what what are the circumstances in which? I, I'm betting this horse. Is this a horse like, like again? Because a lot of times, you know, say it's an eight to one shot, morning right. line, eight to one, 25 right. grand. Do you think this horse is automatic? When are you placing this bet to get that eight to one? And I have to bet the 25K. Yeah. 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 You're going to get well, eight to one. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to get the, I'm going to get this. Well, I'm not necessarily. No, I know, but he's starting at eight to one. He won't I'm going to, I'm going to do it late. With the simulcast money coming in at the same See, time. Here's the, yeah, okay. 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 So you're going to do it late. You're gonna do it late. If, if this is the only horse I'm able to bet, like I'm only going to bet this horse, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to show my hand early. I'm going to, I'm going to do it late as probably, you know, the simulcast money and all that stuff comes in at the same time and just kind of let it ride it out with that. Well, it makes sense. I mean, because other people are going to bet it either way. If you drop it early, I would just, uh, yeah, I, I would, you know, you bet it early, you're going to show your hand a little bit yeah. to people. Yeah. Right. So, okay. okay. I wouldn't bet early. It's uh, like that okay. scene in, it's like that scene, to me, it's like that scene in Empire Strikes Back where the Millennium Falcon just kind of floats out with the garbage. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just going to let it ride along and make it look like it's simulcast money. Just let it ride yeah. along. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. The Millennium Falcon dragging garbage. <laughs> uh, but Okay, so so okay, so I should rephrase this real quick before we uh, just move on and, and wrap it up. Is um, all right. So if you're watching betting, I guess if we're watching it, so AJ, you're sticking on. You're watching the late drop, and that's it. The early drop doesn't bother you. The consistent eight to one to six to one to four to one to five to one. You don't care about that. To be honest, I'm looking at the odds to like I like when I go into something, and again, my philosophy might be terrible because who am I? But when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at where's the money at early? If there's a big underlay, I know that barn money's in there, but I'm I'm not scared of that barn money regardless. What I'm waiting for is that last few minutes, where's all the money coming in? Again, is this twenty to one shot now? You know, five to one is 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 it as you know is the value there that I thought I was going to have when I kept it earlier or the night before? So that that's the only way it sways me either way on my bed. It's not going to deter me from anything, but it is going to it change the way I do things when that simulcast and all that late money come in. Am I still getting the same odds where I want where I I think I have value? All right. So that's a little different than when you bet other things because you're a fade the public kind of big time. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's a ton of different. Like when you look at, um, you know, a lot of time you look at like where, sh when and where sharp money comes in. If you're betting the football game, you watch that throughout the week. Um, but that's, I mean, if, you know, you look at the, the chiefs now they're, you know, three point favorites in the Super Bowl. Well, all the money's coming in on the Chiefs. Do I like the Chiefs? I'm probably going to bet the Chiefs now because I might not get three to one come kickoff in, in two weeks. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's a little different there. but um, Yeah, I'm just wondering, quick, velocity-wise, you're a little different with horse race. That you, you, I'm you, a lot different, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, no, that's all I'm asking. Uh, Big Gary, let me ask you the same question. If, like, what tends to affect you the most when you're watching the odds? The late drop, the the middle consistent drop, or the or the early barn money. Well, I like I like the early barn money, and the late money is just an as far as I'm concerned, just an accumulation of what most of the betters feel. So I don't think you're so much going to uh, get a big disparity between the odds at five to one versus actual post time. They'll, they'll probably stay. You know, in in the ballpark, 
But obviously, if you're going to spend $25,000, you'd probably put it to show. You wouldn't even consider a wind bear. Yeah. Because, I mean, you got a quick story. A guy, uh, an owner in California one time had a horse running, big stakes race. He put $300,000 to win. The horse was like 12 to 1. He puts $300,000 to win on him, and the horse goes down to like 4 to 5. So he goes from 12 to 1 to 4 to 5, and he puts $300,000. Make a long story short, the horse wins in a photo, okay? So he ended up, I mean, he, he, he ended up getting his money back and he didn't even win, you know, I mean, he didn't even win a $300,000 profit because it went off less than even money. And he won, and he ended up winning in a photo, but that horse could have went off one to nine and he would have ended up, you know, betting $300,000 and well, to win, you know. Well, in that, <laughs> case, in that case, he should have did it right away Why? because if you do it late you're going to get four to five okay. if you do it early other people are going to jump on other horses being like screw that yeah. horse and yeah, they're but, going to bet other horses but with that kind of money i don't know if he was i don't know if he had thought that he was going to get 12 to 1 on the horse because he put three hundred thousand dollars on it i don't know if he obviously well, i hope he's not that stupid I yeah know. Well, i mean if you put three hundred thousand he should have did it early one, that horse is going to be one to nine for the next 30 minutes too so Maybe, but I feel like I feel like if you did that early on a twelve to one shot, everybody would look at it and be like, "Oh, they're gonna think values in other horses, and they're gonna really get a jump on the other horses." You're definitely not gonna get it later on because they're not have time to. Okay. So, you know, the only thing you could do is do it that early. Yeah, but I think you'd ask the question: If someone put three hundred thousand dollars on it, at one point in time, you're gonna try to cancel a bet. Or <laughs> cancel well, thousand. That that, that yeah. being said, though, how many people are looking at the early barn money who 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 you know are at the track or bet the races like you're you're kind of every day just I'm gambling and I, and I do this. I think I think Randy's right there where you have to do it early. Give yourself a chance to get better odds as opposed to you know yeah, you what, have to do it early. You're, you have a better idea of what you're going to get. You might not get better odds either yeah, way, but you have a chance. Uh, obviously, yeah. my answer to that would be just foolish to bet three hundred thousand dollars on a horse. Just bet him. Yeah, well, that's fair too. But well, we obviously knew yeah. something. But at won. least, at least you know when <laughs> if you're betting a twelve to one shot, you bet three hundred k early. It goes down to four to five. People are now going to look at who was the favorite that day and think, "Wow, I'm getting that favorite who was for four to one, five to seven one to two. Now, to now I'm one. getting them at five to one. I'm going with that." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have yeah, a, you have a yeah. shot. You have a shot yeah. of bringing those odds back. At the, at the four to one shot, I went down to four to five. I would say to myself, "That horse is loaded," and I will play him on top of my tries and my exactas. And obviously, I'm not going to put any win money on anything. Yeah. But I, we're we're you're we're talking about four people talking about this specific angle how many people realistically look at that when they have a horse in mind they see i like this five to two morning line favorite now it's five to one I, now all of a sudden i'm I, is, is a better i'm thinking i'm gonna load up on that if 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 i'm not aware or even taking into consideration that, that the early. general public that doesn't have that much yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no totally yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, we're talking, we're way too smart. Um, all right. Yeah. Um, and there's obviously much more to this and we'll get into this on the part two of this. This is the basically beginner one where I know big Gary wants to get into the mathematical of the odds and the doubles and the pick threes on the morning lines and everything like that, which are interesting. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that another time. But um, so I guess we're all in agreement of, we really don't care about this tote board watching that much. Um, we don't do it that often. Um, it, it's it's interesting to know how it affects us, though. How it doubt makes you doubt bets and yeah. things like that. I try not to. I'm with AJ on that. Where if I like a horse at six to one and no one else likes him, he's an overlay. I I love that because it yeah. makes me feel smarter than everybody else. But I could see how it could. Do people? I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, your best bet, if you know what you're doing, is to not watch the odds board unless you're really using it to your favor to try to get money. How about how about an example? If let's say, like, and I've done this, 25 minutes to post, I make a little chart up. 25 minutes to post, 20 minutes to post, 15 minutes to post, 10 minutes, five, and break the post time, and you track the odds. And just halfway through in the cycle, maybe when you're at 10 minutes to post, you see that. Every horse, their odds have gone up, except for one horse. His odds have gone down. So what would that tell you? That's that mid one. That's the mid move. Not, 
that would tell you that obviously someone put a lot of money on that one particular horse. Or and money's keeping right? coming in. I feel like that's the middle guy. That's the yeah. guy that's but, pretty but, and, and that that would be one angle to look at. But if two horses dropped and all the rest of them went up, then you got to guess as to, well, where did the money, more money go on? The one, the horse that went from eight to five, eight, up, eight to one to five to one, or the one that went from three to one to three to two or something. Yeah. Then you well, then you got your guess, you know, you'd have to guess. Yeah. Well, if you see just that one loss, that would make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. That's the mid move guy. Yeah. I think I would be that guy if I liked the horse. I think I would if it was an eight to one and mid, a middle one, I think I would be the sprinkle guy. I would. I think I'd be the sprinkle guy. Because then I'm not really showing my hand at yeah. all. Yeah. But then again, if you I'm do it sure last minute, do. you're kind of playing it like you're not. You're gonna get good odds anyway. Did you? Yeah. I just be afraid of not getting to the window in time. Yeah, I mean, it, it a lot depends on the track. I mean, you know, if you're betting, if you're betting a Santa Anita versus Finger Lakes, you're gonna know that you put so much money, the same amount of money to win on Santa Anita horse versus Finger Lakes horse. Your Finger Lakes horse, the odds are gonna jump a lot less, a lot more than what Santa Anita is gonna jump. Mm. So you'd be more apt to be able to hide it. At Santa Anita versus Finger Lakes. Oh yeah, my father's big on that because I'll be like, "Hey, look at this horse that I told you about. Look, he's two to one, ten to one morning line." And he'll look at the, he like, "Look at the pool totals. There's three hundred dollars in the pool. Like somebody <laughs> bet four dollars on him." I'm like, "All right, yeah, you're right." Touche. Because remember, they all start ninety nine to one. Yeah. That's something yeah. we have to realize. Horses don't start out two to one. They're all ninety nine to one mm-hmm. when the money opens up. Interesting though too is, you know, for if anybody's super interested in this that's, that's listening to this now is to go back and listen to our David Aragona interview, yeah, because he's an morning line maker for Naira and the way he breaks it down, especially with how he talks about well, what's the public going to do? This is how I make these lines, not necessarily how I handicap them, is pretty interesting. And if this is a topic people like, then that's definitely an interview you have to go back and. and Absolutely. Well. All right. So I think we summed it all up. I think we talked about it enough. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot you can learn from just looking at the odds. Though, just as an example, they say one out of three the favorites win one out of three races. Then, if you take the the top four betting choices in a race, they win the race eighty percent of the time. So I mean, four out of five races, one of your top four you know, selections actually win. Unless it's Gulfstream. I feel like it doesn't mean shit there. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is true. Um, yeah. And they do have stats. In the, in the front of every program or anything you can look up, they will show you how much the favorites yeah. come in and everything like that. But it is true. I mean, listen, the guys are making the morning lines. They're pretty good at it. I mean, because it is true. It's not like they get them from anybody. So they're, they're doing their job. All right. All right. So that, that was it. So that's our handicapping 101 for the day. And that's tote board watching yeah. the simple version. And we can get more advanced on that. Anything else anybody needs to add? On that? I, I will say one other thing. Okay. If it's the last race on the card, we got to remember 90% of the people are losing money at that time. So you're going to get some odds like you might see a, a race, a horse would normally probably go five to two. He probably ends up going off four or five to one. And they're hammered. Because people are going to try to win back their money. So automatically, okay, the odds are on the last race of the card. That's all I'm saying. It, people are trying, 90% of the people are losing money. They're trying to win it back. So they're not going to waste their time on something that's, lesser odds than what they would want, want to get to get their money back. So the five to two will become a four to one shot. Hmm. It's another that. great angle. Wait, wait, wait till that last race of the card and take advantage of the drunks and the broke people the broke. that are trying to chase it, which uh, funny story. We all know AJ Ryder did that. We know that. And, and, won. and he won. And won, but won. Lost, lost his ticket, ticket in the program. And his Later co- found it and, and still cashed. Just want yeah. to say, later found it and still cashed. Yeah. So. <laughs> Lost his ticket that was in his program that was in his hand. Yeah. It's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Those programs are tricky. Yes, they are. All right, so no, that was another uh, great angle. I think we gave a bunch of them here. 
Yep. So, all right. Fantastic. All right, everybody. So that was Handicapping 101, watching the tilt board with the triple clowns and Big Gary. All right, everybody. See you later, everybody. See you later. See ya. Triple Clowns is a production of the team at Big Umbrella. Rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Send us your questions at clowns at gmail.com and you may be featured on a future episode. Follow us on social media at Clowns Triple on Twitter and Instagram and follow me, AJ Ryder, at Troy McLean WWE on Twitter. Like and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. All right, guys, for AJ Ryder, I'm out of here. See you later, everybody.